Hi, in this video we are going to discuss about visual pathway and the lesions. So this question is usually asked as a diagram question and also can be asked as an answer briefly question or a short note. So first let's see the diagram. Okay. So when you are asked to draw the diagram of the visual pathway, you can start by drawing the two eyeballs and mark them as the left and the right eye. You can also show the visual field of these eyes. And then you can show the nasal and the temporal fibers. See how are these fibers formed? We know that light first reaches our photoreceptors which are the rods and cones. From the rods and cones, the information is passed over to the bipolar neurons. And from the bipolar neurons, it, it is passed on to the ganglion cells. Now the axons of these ganglion cells form the optic nerve. Okay, so what these, so we know, now we know that these fibers are the axons of the ganglion cells. Now here you can see that the orange fibers are the nasal fibers and the blue one are the temporal fibers. Which means these temporal fibers are responsible for our nasal vision whereas the orange fibers that is nasal fibers are responsible for a temporal vision. See, the orange, you, you can see that these nasal fibers are responsible for the temporal vision right and the blue one that is the temporal fibers are responsible for a nasal vision clear so then you can mark the optic nerve to show that these fibers come out of each eye via the optic nerve after this the optic nerve forms the optic chiasm okay it is at the optic chiasm that the temporal fibers will pass uncrossed but the nasal fibers will cross at the optic chiasm okay see you can see that the nasal fibers are crossing at the optic chiasm. Okay. And after this they form what is known as the optic tract. So optic tract contains the uncrossed fibers of the temporal side as well as the crossed nasal fibers. Okay. Once it travels through the optic tract they then reach the lateral geniculate body. So that is the second order neuron. Now from the lateral geniculate body these form what is known as a geniculocalcrine tract or the optic radiation and reach our occipital cortex. Okay. So, uh, do you know which is our which is the primary visual center? It is a calcrine sulcus. That is why geniculocalcrine tract got its name. See, it is from the geniculate body to the calcrine sulcus of the cortex. That is why it is called the geniculocalcrine tract. Okay. So, I hope this pathway is... Uh, Okay, it is uh, easy to remember. It is first the optic nerve, then the optic chiasm, then the optic tract, then lateral geniculate body, geniculocalcrine tract and the occipital cortex. Okay, so now let's see what to write when a short note or an answer briefly question of this visual pathway is asked. So first you can write about the origin. So visual sensations that arise in the rods and the cones are transmitted to the bipolar cells that convert the sense, con, convert, convey the sensation to the ganglion cells. And from the ganglion cells, the axons of ganglion cells form the optic nerve. And then I, I said there is an optic chiasma where there is a crossing of the nasal retinal fibers. Then we have the optic tract which contains the crossed nasal fibers and the uncrossed temporal fibers. And then they reach the lateral geniculate body of the thalamus where the optic tract fiber synapse with the lateral geniculate nucleus. Then we have the geniculocalcrine fibers which pass via the optic radiations forming the geniculocalcrine tract. And we have the primary visual cortex which is a calcrine fissure area of the medial occipital lobe. So you can just explain either each of the area of the visual pathway. Okay. So next let's see about the lesions of the visual pathway. So suppose this is the visual pathway. We are transecting this at different levels and then seeing what will, what will happen to the visual field. Okay. So first we are going to transect it at the level of the optic nerve. So what will happen? The vision of that eye will be lost. So such a condition is known as anopia. So if optic nerve is cut, there will be anopia of that eye. Next we are going to transect it at the level of the optic chiasma. So here from this diagram you can clearly see that both the nasal fibers are cut out. And which uh, field is, does the nasal fibers pick up? The temporal field of both the eyes, right? 
so in this condition both the temporal part of the vision is lost and that such a when the opposite side of uh, field of vision is lost it is known as heteronemous hemianopia so when opticism is uh, transected we have heteronemous hemianopia next we are going to transect it at the level of the optic tract so in this case you can see that here now the temporal fibers of one eye and the nasal fibers of the opposite eye is affected so which field will be affected the nasal part of one eye and the temporal part of the other eye so here in this diagram you can see that the same side of the visual field is affected that is why it is called homonemous hemianopia okay now next we are going to transect it at the level of the optic radiation or the occipital cortex in such case also we will find homonemous hemianopia but this time it will be with macula sparing which means the macula will be spared so why is the macula spared that is because first of all macula has got a very large representation in the cortex secondly it's got bilateral representation and also collateral blood supply so that is why it is in, in the clinics it is usually we find homonemous hemianopia with macula sparing okay so these are the lesions that are usually present when it, the visual pathway is transected at different levels so now let's just see the terms one, once again anopia means complete loss of visual field in one eye hemianopia means blindness of half of the visual field homonemous hemianopia means the same side of both visual fields are lost and heteronemous hemianopia means opposite side of the visual field is lost okay so when a question like visual pathway and lesions is asked you have to draw the diagram and explain the different levels and also when the lesions are asked you have to explain uh, which lesion occurs when the visual pathway is transected at which level okay so i hope the concept is clear thank you